uh, axe head on this is very similar to the axe uh, which I was hit with. It's a lot heavier and bulkier than this, but this is the basic shape. And when I was hit with it, with uh, great force, it smashed my skull and dented all the skull in. And it was about two years later when I saw a psychiatrist. And uh, I went to him and uh, we had a two-hour interview. And during that interview, instead of talking about my head injury, I was actually talking uh, mostly about my second tour of Northern Ireland in South Armagh. When I discovered I had post-traumatic stress disorder, um, I had no God to call on and I was at my lowest ebb and I needed something to give me strength. I was very suicidal and the only thing I knew that I loved in my life was poetry and writing and uh, so I drew on it and that's what's kept me alive to this day. I would say that uh, most soldiers have, have some form of PTSD, especially if they've seen live action, Northern Ireland, Afghanistan, Iraq situation. That, you know, most people are going to suffer in some way, especially with modern warfare, you know, because in modern warfare, you don't see your enemy. You, you never know when that bullet's meant for you. So it's like 24-7 living with it. Quite different to, you know, say the First World War in the trenches, where someone may have been away four years, but maybe only saw five days of action. You know, I'm not belittling that, it's a different form of PTSD. I started uh, coming out of the dark spiral uh, when I was introduced to combat stress. Uh, I walked into the smoke room and uh, there was about 20 guys there and I was really, really nervous and um, I just stood there listening and I realised that they all were suffering in a similar way to me. All different but all similar and I realised that I wasn't going to be alone and isolated anymore. When I was a child uh, of about 12 year old, I uh, used to listen with the class uh, to B BBC Radio 4, I think it was, and uh, there'd be poetry and songs on the radio, and then I heard on the radio during, you know, that spell, I heard um, John Macefield's uh, Cargoes, and that was it. My normal day, I'm a little bit different, I'm a, a nocturnal. Uh, that's been going on for about the last 15, 16 years. I normally get up between about 2 and 3, and about once every 7 to 10 days I get the inspiration for a poem. So, And I've learned over the years, when I wake up it's there, it's there in my subconscious, and I jump up and I write the poem there and then. Normally takes me about no more than an hour for each poem. I scribble it down and it's done and I very, very hmm. rarely change a single word. Is my Over the years I've had to accept uh, that, you know, I'll never work again. Something that was one of the biggest decisions I was to make in my life. But now I live my life by total avoidance of stress which is absolutely impossible in this day and age. That's how I live, and I use my poetry as the crutch. I enjoy sitting outside in the early hours. On my own, my thoughts are very clear. And I can either watch the sunrise, nature take its course, try to make sense of it all. Not everybody likes my work. Some people do, some people don't. But it's just about sharing and giving and leaving something behind. You know, my reason for being on this planet, basically. At one moment in my life, I almost lost hold of my dreams. And everyone in life, doesn't matter who you are, you must have a dream. Doesn't matter how small, but you must, or how, how big, you must have a dream, you know. And the other important thing to remember is that dreams 
don't have to come true. It, it, it's, you just have to have a dream to follow. My dream is to be the poet laureate. And okay, maybe I won't make it. But my dream is to be that poet laureate, even if only just for one day. Just one day.